So I was kind of doing both jobs and falling in love with just brewing, going to, you know, Monday through Friday. Just, you know, I make I make beer. This is my new office. This, this is pretty cool. And then I get the text from my dad saying, I want to start a brewery, but I need your I need your help. Yeah. And I said, sounds good. He said, I need a more than a sounds good chat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's do this. Hey, thanks for joining in on another episode of Tap That AZ. I'm your host, Eric Walters. In this episode, head to Old Town Scottsdale to Goldwater Brewing Company. Got to hang out with Chad and Dylan and Jordan from Goldwater Brewing Company and um, had a great time hanging out in the um, gold mine, the basement, the old shooting range. Awesome, awesome place. Get to the tap room. Uh, so many great beers on tap there. And um, if you have the opportunity, get down in that basement, down to the gold mine, and check that out. These guys are awesome, making some great beers. Um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. We got a YouTube channel now. This episode um, is going to be the first of many that has uh, video content as well. So check that out on the YouTube channel. Also go to tapthataz.com. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And um, also be sure to check out azfoodandbeer.com. Um, follow us on social media as well. Just a bunch of people getting together to help get Arizona beer on the map. Uh, the plan is to have um, exclusive articles, video content for that as well. Uh, maybe have a few different podcasts covering different aspects of the Arizona beer scene. But uh, yeah, check it out. AZ Food and Beer. Uh, in the meantime, let's tap into Goldwater Brewing Company. All right, so I am at Goldwater Brewing Company, uh, the first brewery to brew on site in Old Town Scottsdale. That's, That's pretty correct. awesome. That's yep. a good, it's a good thing to claim for you guys. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with Dylan and Chad and Jordan, guys. Yeah. So How's it going, guys? guys? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And we got my man. Uh, you can't hear him, Aaron. Say what's up. What up? Yep, he's back there. <laughs> he, he's creating visual beauty right so mm-hmm. visual pleasure yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so why why did you guys do this why did you guys decide to do this um i mean it wasn't really up to us okay um, right. <laughs> um but yet yet it was up to us i mean uh our father greg um he actually has been homebrewing for over 30 years um and since me and my brother could ever remember um since we were little kids we'd always help him out in the garage brewing beer um every weekend and uh We'd actually travel up to Prescott with, for, to his cousin's house, kind of his um, craft beer partner at the time. Okay. Uh, that's where we developed the, the Desert Rose over, you know, 20 years ago um, and all those other flagship beers. Um, flash, you know, fast forward, you know, 30 plus years, we're, uh, we're now on a, in a 10 barrel brewing system on uh, you know, Scottsdale Road. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Chad, Chad's taken basically all of my dad's recipes and uh, made them better. And then uh, wow. began coming up with his own and kind of blowing my dad out of the water. <laughs> That's sorry, why he sorry, didn't dad. join us. That's <laughs> why. Yeah. yeah. He was at, we're, we're down in the, what is this called? The, uh, the gold mine. So this gold is the gold mine. mine. Um, we just recently dubbed it the gold mine uh, underground tap and barrel. Okay. Um, so we started doing barrel aging down here. I think we have, our goal is to get like 24 barrels down yep, here. Yeah, 20, 24 barrels. Um, okay. Right now we have over a dozen and they're all full of just delicious different beers. Gotcha. So Nice. We're um, surrounded by it. Just <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, you're all everything around you, from our bright tanks behind us to you know, full of our loggers. Our yeah, uh, so we have three uh, box and three 18 barrel horizontal logger tanks down here. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of craft breweries don't really dive into the loggers because they take so long. They take up tank space. You can turn an ale around in a week or two. Okay. Um, so we decided we want to kind of bring loggers back and. Right. My dad's always been a fan of the German lagers over the English pub ales. Okay. Um, it was it was a, a goal for him to, you know, the pub ales are easy to make, but yeah. the lagers are the hard ones to make. I want to learn those. Okay. Right. Um, so we kind of just adopted that and turned the cellar into a lager and barrel aging room and How about just going for it. Barrel tap system that Chad actually made. Yeah. So. So that, all that beer is in that one barrel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get that all, all the time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in the walk-in upstairs. Ah, okay, but, uh, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 crazy because you know the gold mine is actually under our neighbor's building, which you know we have the building next to it, but we you know occupy this space as well. So putting beer through the wall from our brewery down here, you know, takes quite 
quite some long long hoses yeah oh, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. so was it was it always attached like was that part of the you guys purchased this and this was in that or did you kind of create mm -hmm. that um yeah they were, i mean they were going to turn this into more of a museum history museum okay for the creative center above us oh, um, gotcha. but we're like well we got some ideas for it so what you know what do you think if we did a turn into a tap room and there's like oh like, well, that's cool so yeah. just a little flashback history this used to be an underground shooting range so Mandel's shooting supplies, they incorporated in 1975. <laughs> we still have the teddy bear with the machine gun sign That's in the bad. basement. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure a lot of you know that. Um, yeah. But we, yeah, so the landlord really, they didn't have any cra crazy ideas what to use for. And, um, you know, they, my dad was like, well, it'd be really cool if we could sell our beer down there. And the landlord's eyes just lit up. He said, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, two years later, we have it pretty much packed down here. Yeah. yeah so these, right. these five tubes... But, yep. um, they go back 50 feet. Okay. 75 so, feet. Oh, 75. Okay. Yeah. So 25 it goes over the, under the courtyard above. Okay. So people would literally bring their guns down here and shoot. Just so, shoot into the holes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a photo I could show you, but, uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's pretty cool. A lot of them would store their guns in this vault room up here. Up, okay. Up top. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they said people that come down here that, that have been here, like my gun used to live there for years. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> That's pretty cool that you guys are, are connecting those two. Right. You know, yeah. alcohol and shooting. Like <laughs> just not together yeah not together <laughs> let's clarify yeah let's yeah. clarify you guys can't bring your guns in and drink their beer and shoot no sadly not but, yeah. <laughs> so well how did it end up like that i know you guys have been brewing with your dad for years so sure. how so uh so Dylan, what's your role um so my role is the uh kind of the creative director um role um you know we all kind of have our have our piece in this company of roles that are pretty important to its survival yeah um my job is to kind of keep the visuals and the brand alone. The brand, the visuals, and the marketing, kind of the power of the message behind it to, to get out in a positive way and look good. Yeah. Um, I think the same we've always said, me and my brother said that, um, you know, he brews the beer that's within my designs. So like say at the canning, for instance. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, uh, you, what was it, you taste? So you, you like what you taste before you, uh, you say it better than I do, I well, forget this one. I, I always tell people, you know, people always get confused about me and my brother when we started. Um, I said, well, everything you drink is from Chad. Everything you see is from Dylan. Uh, so everything yeah. Goldwater related, everything you see, yeah. whether it's social media, whether it's on a T-shirt, whether it's, you know, on the Chalk menu, business menu. cards, yeah. that's all Dylan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, everything you drink, it's, it's all me and now my assistant. So Jordan. Oh, you can't here. give me a name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for him to see Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> my lowly assistant, Jordan. Yeah. So yeah. and, and you've got a you've got a brewing pedigree too, like uh, you. Yeah. So um, I used to work at Mother Road for about three years. Uh, Start off as an intern there and kind of worked my way up the totem pole, and then just recently moved down to Fly, uh, Phoenix and knew Chad pretty well and started talking to him and pestering him and yeah. finally got a job from him. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun. It's been a nice kind of change of pace working here, kind of different atmosphere, able to work more so in kind of different variety of beers, which okay. is a lot more fun. And yeah. I'm really happy to be able to dip my, you know, dip my toes in the fields of loggers. Right. Right. This guy's a, a firkin master, I guess <laughs> you would call it. So yeah, <laughs> learned all my firkin goodness from Mother Road. So uh, okay, yeah, that's a good, that's a good mentor. To yeah. Have. Oh yeah. For sure. So he does some pretty, pretty clever and creative firkins. Um, okay. I mean, you know, aside from helping Chad with the day to days and really helping him tune in, you know, fine tune ingredients and fine tune just the brewing. Um, yeah. You know. He's done some really cool firkins, so that's a cast. I'm sure you're familiar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have first firkin Fridays, um, you know, every first Friday of the month. Um, so this next one, uh, this probably won't air, but it's yeah. uh, he's actually doing a birthday <laughs> suit West Coast IPA. Uh, it's going to be aged with strawberry and toasted coconut. Wow. So he's I'm got some. That. Film that tomorrow. He's got a list of like 19 <laughs> firkins for the year. So <laughs> yeah. you know, well, I got a whole list going on. And it keeps growing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So it's fun. So. We get to have fun here. We don't really work. I yeah. mean, you know. besides their labor, you know, it's yeah. it's pretty yeah. fun. Oh so. yeah, that's why I say, you know, when people ask you, you know, is your job hard? Is it tedious? I'm like, damn, damn, I'm making beer. You know, yeah. how <laughs> bad can it really be? Yeah. What do you do for a living? Oh, we make beer. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. No, we, <laughs> we, we, we stress. We get frustrated, you know, right. like any other job. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when we're tasting a beer that we made, especially the lagers and the barrel aged beers beers that we made, you know, three, four, five, six months ago, and we're tasting yeah. it for the first time. It's like, this is why we do this. Yeah. So. That's so awesome. We, we keep going. So we're, go back a little bit to where, yeah. like, the building itself. Like, how so, did you... 
reverse it a little bit further. Kind of, I kind of fast forward too much about yeah. the story, but you know, um, you know, my dad always had a had a passion to um, open up a brewery. You know, he's he's really good at brewing. He wanted to just you know bite the bullet and just do it. You yeah. know, um, so he was actually looking at locations in uh, East Mesa where we're, we're from, um, okay. and there's this prime spot that he was gonna you know buy the land and actually call it you know the I think he was gonna call it the Red Mountain Brewing Company or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so fast forward again, um, he decided to wait till he, you know, when he was going to decide that, to decide to open a brewery, my mom became pregnant and then he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go the safe route and go into insurance. Uh, <laughs> so today he owns his own insurance company and he owns a brewery. So, I mean, it, it's kind of, it's kind of a win-win. Well, and if it know. wasn't for the insurance company, the brewery wouldn't be here. So. Right. So, <laughs> That's true. Um, we thank the insurance company. Plus, <laughs> plus at that time, you know, he didn't have a team. Now he actually he created a team. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. <laughs> so the building, like, how did you guys? Because so, this is a prime location. Right. right? So it house. actually goes back to his insurance. Okay. So yeah. we were. Fast we, forward, rewind. Yeah, it's kind of it. a kind of a tricky story, but <laughs> uh, cool. you know, one day we were we were kind of just sitting on a Sunday or whatever, and we get this text from my dad. He's like, "Hey, do you guys want to open a brewery?" Mm-hmm. We're like, "Wait, seriously?" <laughs> so I'm like, was, "Hell yeah!" And then Chad's like, "I yeah, was sh- currently yeah, sure. brewing. I was and, currently brewing at Cartel Brewery in Tempe uh, okay. a few years ago." And I just got a part-time job as an assistant. I wanted to, I wanted to get in the brewing industry. I was bartending on the weekends to make money because we all know that the, the pay here is not great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was kind of doing both jobs and falling in love with just brewing, going to you know Monday through Friday. Just you know, I make I make beer. This is my new office. This is this is pretty cool. And then I get the text from my dad saying, "I want to start a brewery, but I need your I need your help." Yeah. And I said, sounds good. He said, I need a more than a sounds good, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's do this. And that All day, right. Goldwater was, you know. Yeah. Um, but from then, you know, one day we were sitting around the pool, I think it was like four years ago, and we were just kind of hanging, hanging out their, their, their house in East Mesa. We we're just trying to think of a name, you know, think of a location, just kind of get the balls rolling. And then we came up with, you know, kind of Goldwater. It was kind of probably. Um, after going through about you know 50 names, we decided you know that that sounds it because you know beer is essentially gold water. Like um, people affiliate that's that our name with being a part of the family Goldwater, mm-hmm. which there's no affiliation. Yeah, um, we actually are on Goldwater Boulevard and Scottsdale Road, so it made even more sense location yeah. based, but also just beer's gold water. You yeah. Know? So, um, but anyways, when we find the building, um, my dad's lease at his um, insurance company was up. And the same day, this lease became up here. So same day, he's like, drove by it. And he's like, let's do it. So yeah. found this location. And it's funny because it used to be a, a, you know, a, grain, a grain feed, feed store. store. Uh, it used to be an auction house. It used to be a Corvette shop. It used to be a gun store or ammo store. Right. And when it was an auction house, my dad would actually come here on Sundays. He would buy a bicycle somewhere, fix it up, ride it here at 5 or 7 in the morning and sell it in the auction. Really? When in he was, the same building. When he was 12 years old. He was 12 old. years old. Oh, I was so. thinking when he was like 40 years old. No. <laughs> yeah, he didn't need to do that. No. But anyway, so you he locked... your own company. Yeah. Right. So he, he locked in the, the lease based on he moved his insurance company into the building just oh, to claim gotcha. it. Because yeah. you have to claim the building before you can open a license to be a brewery. So oh, it's kind of ass backwards. But yeah. We did that for a while, and then now, obviously, that's now no longer an insurance agency. <laughs> right. So, from then we started construction, started getting everything going, and it's just been a process ever since. But every day gets better. So, yeah. and we keep upgrading everything. And so, we we pick this location for a couple of reasons, and you know we've we've been we've been to quite a few breweries around the country, and you know diving into market research. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we see you know the the big 20, 30, 40 barrel systems in in uh, you know air parks and then we see the little two three four five barrel systems like right on main roads and my dad's like well why can't we do like a seven to fifteen barrel system on a main road and just yeah. pack it in yeah oh if you see it upstairs it's pretty it's tight. tight yeah so it's we have tight. a yeah. we have a 10 barrel brewery we have five 10 barrel fermenters two 20 barrel fermenters four 10 barrel bright tanks um and a tasting room all in about 1900 square feet and two yeah. bathrooms. And, and two bathrooms. Walk-in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we packed it in. For yeah. Sure. That's a, but it works, though. Like it works does great. work. Yeah. The yeah. function of it, just the, everything about it just kind of works as and, well as we could. You know, going back to my dad, you know, he, he, he loves to prove people wrong. So a lot of 
a lot of fellow <laughs> brewers were telling him, you can't, there's no way you could put a 10 barrel brewery in this building. Yeah. He said, watch me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he mapped it out. There was, there was blue painter's tape all around the day before the tanks came. And he's yeah. like, well, shit, this, is, this can't go here. Hold on. Let's yeah. put this here. What if we put this last, here? And last minute shifting. and yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were sweating that next morning, but we fit it in. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. And how did this, did, in, when you guys discovered this, right? You got to be touring the building and then like, oh, yeah, we got this down here. Yeah. So that, this was kind of. Um, well, that was kind of a brother-in-law. That was, that was Jimmy that. Um, not discovered it, but he, he mentioned it to my dad and to us. He's like, I think there's an, used to be an underground shooting range under that building. And my dad's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Jimmy's like, no, I'm pretty sure it's like in that area. Yeah. Happened to be right next door underground. Oh, yeah. We're like, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Like, this could be a cool, just, it's a cool Beer. dream, you know? I mean, it's kind of like a man cave down here. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like something that like somebody would spend a lot of money to create. Sure. Like to replicate that that look that you guys just have. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's it all just kind of everything we've done here just kind of came together. Yeah, and it's it's hard to put into words of how well things came together. Yeah, you know, as far as just everything fitting, everything working, everything just being, you know, wor- you know, just working. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, I mean, well, f- for all we know, I mean, the this was an old shooting range you know incorporated in 1975 but we have no clue what it was before that if it was if did did he build it was it built they it literally looks like an old sewage trap down here you know (laughs) it does with the tubes and we have five tubes they're each you know 75 feet long and four feet wide okay all concrete and people are shooting, you know, AK-47s down them. Down so, them, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're pretty solid. Crazy, yeah. pretty solid, crazy idea, you know, back yeah. in the Wild West days, apparently. But, uh, yeah, we just, we don't really have a, we don't really know the reason why they closed down. Right, so, right. You don't ask either. I don't right? ask. You don't want to dig underneath that cement <laughs> too deep either, you know. Yeah, they, they right. still say, they still say uh, one of Al, Capone, Al Capone's guys are back there, so yeah, we I don't can, know. Yeah, yeah, I can see it, yeah. We're too scared to look. Right, exactly. <laughs> we won't get too deep into that. We'll, we'll get some deep shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the beer. So your, your approach, a lot of these are recipes you and your dad created. Yes, sir. But you took them to the next level. Yeah, so we, I mean, my dad had... We homebrewed a lot. We Desert Rose has been our, our flagship beer. It's a it's a uh, German style ale, light light golden ale, and we add some cactus fruit. Okay. Um, Southwest cactus fruit. You can only harvest you know once once a year. Nice. Um, and he he always wanted a fruit style beer that wasn't sweet, because okay. in our realm of brewing, um, a sweet <laughs> beer doesn't exist because beer is fermented sugar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. But other than that, I mean, we had a we had a solid pale ale, we had a solid ESB, we had a solid porter. Um, my dad, you know, did brew some lagers. He did Doppelbox and okay. and all that. He, uh, he always had Oktoberfest parties back in the day when we were we have filmed that you know oh, yeah. I was four around, years old, Dylan was two, <laughs> yeah. uh, running around. They're all drinking beer and we're <laughs> drinking the root beer. And, <laughs> nice. um, but yeah, I, we just you know I fell in love with beer and brewing. Um, ever since I was a teenager with my dad and um, we just kept writing new recipes and learning new recipes and um, slowly building our repertoire and our, our menu with pails, IPAs, stouts, browns, porters, saisons, wits, martsons, doppelbox, um, you name it. I, yeah. we, we've tried pretty much everything. We haven't really dived into sours because okay. we're a little, a little scared, but that, that scare is gonna. That That's, scare is gonna end very soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, something we may be As diving into here yeah. very shortly. Yep. Yeah, nice. That's a wide range, <clears throat> and in some yep. a lot of things I see that you guys do, uh, like the Martin and in, in the box and mm-hmm. the double box or double box, <clears throat> people aren't doing those. Right. You know what I mean? Right. They're they're and there's some great beers in Arizona. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you guys are just doing things that you haven't heard those names in a long time right? yeah and, and we uh we were actually uh just thinking to ourselves the other day and just kind of counting in our head we're like how many beers do we have we <laughs> came up that we have 29 beers currently on tap 29 on tap on tap. On on tap. there's impressive. uh i think 17 something upstairs and then there's 11 down here yeah so, in the gold mine that's awesome and with that system <clears> with the with just the setup you guys have it's it's like efficient and yeah yeah, with you two like working together with Jordan and Chad working together, is it tight? I mean, oh yeah, you guys are yeah. like 
Yeah, we, may, we make it work, but, you know, it's definitely a little tie up there. But, you know, we, we <laughs> over the last couple months, we've definitely learned how to kind of work around each other and make things work, you know, yeah. pretty fluidly. Yeah. So, yeah. They laugh a lot, so that's a good sign, I guess. Yeah. Well, right now, we're, you know, we, <laughs> we have a pretty solid schedule. We're, we're brewing, on average, about three times a week, so 30 barrels a week, okay. um, sometimes four, sometimes two. Uh, it just depends on what we run out of. We always run out of something because, you know, having that many styles, you're going to run out of something faster than you think you will. Yeah, um, that's for sure. So we always try to keep up with distribution. We have a solid, you know, eight core beers that we're, we're slowly trying to get that a little down so we can keep having fun here. But Of having those those flagships. Yes. Yep. Like the yep. hop chowder and, mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, and those go, you know... Jordan and I would be like, oh, we got 20 barrels. We'll be fine for two weeks. And yeah. 10 days later, we it's have gone. two kegs left. And, and we're it's like, gone. oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah, it's like I get that back on schedule. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so distribution really took off in the last year. We, we hired a, a solid sales rep, uh, Nate. And he's just been, he's been killing it. He's uh, killing it. He's coming <laughs> up on his one year. And, uh, yeah. So I think, uh, I think last time we checked, I think we're at about 110 on tap at 110 restaurants, resorts, and um, bars around the valley. Nice. So that's we're, we're trying to pop yeah. up everywhere. You know, we yep. self-distribute, so that's we're not you know giving distributors some of our money. So we're keeping it all. But yeah. uh, it's uh, pretty funny because you know, as the brewer and as the creative director, people always ask us where you guys on tap, and we're like, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I can uh, probably name a dozen. Un right. Untap.com. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a website. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> no, nah, but with with being you know having self distribution, we're able to really um, be mindful of our you know quality control. So we have yeah. we get to still keep that you know realm of um, making sure our beer is properly being taken care of. Yeah, and it's tastes a big good. Part. So yeah, yeah, because you could be on yeah. a great tap handle somewhere that's a great location, lots of exposure. Right. If they're fucking chucking that keg around, <laughs> you know, yeah. by the time it gets there, yeah. people try yeah. it and they're like, dude. I mean, we do our, we do our best, you know, and keeping yeah. quality control, but there's some things are just out of our hands. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, the freshest pints you'll ever get of gold water will be here in our tap room. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one nice thing is, you know, how fast, you know, when you send beer out for distribution and how quickly we move through, beer, move through beer here, you know, every beer you have here is easily going to be, you know, no less than a month old. Right? Yeah. And it's always just continuously moving. Nice. Yeah, we're, we're hesitant on canning beer, you know, for stores and whatnot, because we don't, wanna, we don't really want to yeah. be a production-based brewery okay. want to be fresh local small craft beer you know yeah. um you know our idea is to stay small but also open up you know possibly like six additional tap rooms around the valley oh, nice um keep them kind of close quarters small some will offer food you know kind of um keep them kind of intimate small good craft beer focus on the focus on the beer um you know and kind of keep it that aspect rather right. than being a conglomerate you yeah know, yeah national brewery so that's not really our goal gotcha so okay Right. People always ask us, you know, when are you when are you guys going to distribute to New York? I'm like, uh, <laughs> 2050 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Best case address? scenario, 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. What's your address? Maybe yeah. I can make Just something happen for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and you guys have gotten recognition recently too for like being named one. I think uh, was it Travel and Leisure. Or yeah. And leisure? Um, yeah. Travel something and leisure, leisure named yeah. us. Um, you know, top top breweries in the United States. I think there's a list of. I think it was 20, but. Um, they said in no particular order, so yeah. we're just in one of those floating categories. Yeah, yeah. Um, Number one. I mean, we, we <laughs> hope so. Yeah, that's, that's, maybe. <laughs> right. As long as we're in top 20, we're, you know, we're doing something right. Yeah. So. And it's got to feel great, too. I mean, all the passion you guys are putting into and the work, that, getting that recognition. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, as a brewer, my big recognition, I, I don't want, I, don't, I, I desire, what it would be nice to have, but I don't expect anything. Um, is to win a uh, medal at GABF or World Beer Cup. Nice. Okay. Uh, one of the two. If I if I get that, then at least I know I'm doing. He's something gonna right, retire. So. He's gonna retire and you know find him in Fiji or something. Right. He's and then I take over. <laughs> right. And then John takes over. And, you know. He's training you for that. So that's exactly. like you know one to yeah. three years from now. <laughs> yeah. And you were you were a magazine cover model as well, right? <laughs> and uh, a calendar cover calendar model. Calendar model. Don't forget model. that. The calendar yeah. models. Oh, were you part of the? Uh, what was that called? The the uh, calendar. Beardois. Yeah, yeah, the Virtua. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to revisit. Was that it uh, Mr. May? Wasn't that it? That was May. Yeah. You were May. What was your What was your setup? Uh, Cinco de Mayo. So I had <laughs> maracas and some a sombrero and some suspenders. <laughs> yeah. But you were on the AZ Craft Brewers Guild magazine, right? I think. That yeah. Was, yeah. 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 I was on that. I was on the. Um, the Entertainer. Yep, Entertainer magazine, which I did which not is, expect it was a group to be on people. the cover. It was a group of people cheersing at, at I think we were at Hus when they took the photo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've gotten my fame here and there. Yeah. 
Dylan's what about like, Wait me? A minute, what, what about, about me? me man? Yeah. We actually just we, we uh, shot for a film or for a TV show in the UK called Ollie's Ale Trail. Oh really? With Ollie Smith. He's okay. a comedian. He's hilarious as hell. Um, but actually, they they did a lot of you know B-roll f- uh, videos upstairs of you know Chad working, Jordan working, and. Um, I was the interviewer kind of guy like we're doing now, but nice. um, I was here and you know they came down. And he's like, "Where's Dylan?" Da, da, da. So yeah. it's kind of they went to um, where did they go? They went Wilderness, to Dragoon. McFate. Were they at Dark Sky? Um, yes, they yeah. were at Dark yeah, Sky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they went to Dragoon, uh, McFate, us, uh, Wilderness, and Dark Sky, okay. all in one episode. So. Yeah. It's only airing in the UK, but parts yeah. of China too. So, gotcha. hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I China. get my hopefully I get my setup in you know in somewhere in, in Croatia or something. I don't know. But uh, anyways, yeah, we're we're just here and there. We're trying to get you know more marketing just opportunities. So yeah, yeah. Well, you guys are taking the right approach too. Like you said, you're not interested in just like being this like faceless entity. It's like this is all local, you know. Right. Just that focus of organic growth. Yeah, and you know what that's I mean. Kind of so, what we're our goal is yeah. to. I think if we we if we keep it kind of humble and we you know, if we like what we do and people start noticing that, I think it will grow itself. Yeah. You know? So yeah. and keep making hopefully. good beer too. That helps, right? No, yeah. It helps a little bit. Keeps <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Just> come back. <laughs> so well, last night you guys had a had an event that um, you tell us about what happened. What yeah, so down. this gold mine. I mean, we we've uh, has. Uh, let me back up. We used to open this gold mine every Friday and Saturday night. Okay. Um, and then coming through summer, summer's kind of our out season. Yeah. So everyone's out of town. It's That's 115 out. for every out. restaurant or bar around this area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah. we kind of lose a lot of business there. Um, so we, for the summer, we just shut down. We, you know, the owners got together. We said, what, how can we make money down here? Yeah. It's just vacant, you know? Right. And my brother-in-law, Jimmy, was like, well, one of the owners as well. He's like, well, why don't we just pack it with a ton of barrels and actually use the space for barrels and then for come production. January, February, crack them all open. We have 24 barrel-aged beers on tap for January, February, March, April yeah. in our season. Right. And we're open five days a week down here. It's like, oh, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Kind Jimmy of takes over, right? Yeah, Jimmy, <laughs> damn, he's got these ideas. Yeah. Jack of all trades, man. Yeah. Um, so we filled all these barrels. We've been doing all these loggers and then... You know, we get all these people that come in like, why isn't the gold mine open? Why isn't the gold mine? Like, I want to go down there. I want to check it out. And, you know, Jordan and I are trying to keep up with production for distribution. So we don't have, we only had two, three, four beers down here. We're like, it's not worth it. Yeah. yeah keeping 29 uh, beers on tap is a little, a little tricky. It's a little yeah. rough. It's a little tough. Plus, <laughs> plus distribution yeah. wholesale. It's yeah. like, yeah. Um, I don't know how they do it. So we've just been, you know, chatting over the last couple of weeks. Uh, how can we open this? And. You know, our, our staff, we only have, what, four bartenders, five bartenders. Currently, for summer, yeah. Yeah, and some, you know, they'll they'll want the weekend off, and they'll get the weekend off, and then we'll try to staff the gold mine, and it just doesn't work out. And yeah. so a couple of days ago, um, I was just like, ah, fuck it. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll bartend, you know, a yeah. couple hours. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then Dylan blew it up with marketing. He's like, come meet the brewmaster. You know, he's, he's talking <laughs> beer, talk blah, beer, blah, blah. Then, and I was just know, like, oh, shit, yeah. how, beer, how busy is this going to be? <laughs> And it uh, was right. Yeah, it, it was a, a it was a great turnout. turnout. Good, yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's hard to pack people down here, but you know the flow down here was pretty cool. People would yeah. get beers, hang out, chat, and go back upstairs, try those beers, and probably you know later come back down and kind yeah. of. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of a campus style vibe here, but it's not really a big campus. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? right. So you what's well, cool down here too? Oh it's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's natural, 68 degrees, I believe. So it's less than that, I think. Yeah. In summer, it's so. chilly. 65, so, and then we awesome. have these three lager tanks. They're not jacketed. They just have the glycol runs going through the beer yeah um so they you know they give off some coolness e- each one's at 38 degrees so yeah. you walk down here from outside and you're like oh it's it's yeah. cold a little yeah. cold down here you don't see a window right. so you don't know the time either so right. yeah. it's kind of like a casino, casino. Yeah. yeah casino <laughs> um but yeah and, and then you know furthering on our campus we have an upstairs balcony as well Oh, um, you do? Okay. That's kind of sit yourself. Yeah. You know, grab a beer in the tap room or down here and go up there. Okay. It's great during, you know, the season when you can actually hang out, the, uh, hang out yeah, up there. And not bake. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but the sunsets are incredible right there. It's just okay. like perfect sun. So yeah. it's really nice for, you know, private events and whatnot. And the gold mine is also available for private events. Um, we're working on a system to, you know, speed up the process and make it more organized um, that starts in about September so okay. you can actually rent this space out nice for birthday parties rent the back courtyard out for a wedding if you want to you know so yeah. you can actually yeah. have have parties your own parties served by Goldwater here on our campus 
<laughs> well, the, the best the best thing about the gold mine is it, it, it's always changing you know we have friends and family that come every couple of months and they're like oh it looks a lot different and they're like yeah with we keep thinking about new ideas and how to get more people down here, how to get more beer down here, what to, how to rearrange the bar tops. Like, uh, it's always changing, it's always progressing, um, and we're just trying to find that perfect little, perfect little niche. Yeah, yeah, and it'll keep doing that too, right? I mean, for you always, guys, to, yeah. that you got to just kind of roll with the punches, yeah. and we'll get bored change. otherwise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Change is good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we never want to be, you know, one of those brewers that have, you know, five beers only, and that's what they do. Right. You know, so it's like right. we want to. Constantly improve it, constantly change it. We want to be a craft brewery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the fun thing about it. You know, it's craft beer is ever evolving. Always new styles coming out, something different every day. And what's the point if you don't play around? You know, yeah. right? What's popular this year it could be dead next year. Yeah, you know what I mean, so Absolutely. you always have to be on top of what the new trends are, or even just find a way to get in front of the trend. Try yeah. something new. That's why we have loggers. They're coming back. Oh yeah, yeah. they're totally making a comeback. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, like like I said, uh, you know, they got creative and actually did a uh, collaboration brew with Oso. Um, which, you know, Josh came down and um, they brewed a batch of an India Pale Lager. Yeah. So we have our lager <laughs> facilities, which is actually right here for you if you want to try that. So I get to try this you right now? You get to now. try it. Oh, uh, I'm going to put my mouth tanks. underneath right. if you want me to. So this beer is our uh, I'm on Vacation uh, India Pale Lager. I'm on Vacation? Yeah, it's a 6.8%. Jordan just Make spilled it all yep. over his face. Make yeah. a little bit of mess, you know. <laughs> Nothing is clean and crap here. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. dude. India Pale Lager. I've never Take had a little one. bit of that. Yeah. So Popped doing, up with uh, a... I mean, this will... Again, this is on September 1st, but uh, uh, we're actually doing a can release oh, yeah. um, with Oso. So we'll do 250 cans, plus it'll be on tap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My man Aaron from 8 a.m. Films is like, uh... Yeah, let me get a little bit of that. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> man, so, that's fantastic, that combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still yeah. get the kind of... The little bit of bitterness, but also kind of the... Uh, the crisp, smooth, you know, finish. Yeah. And so. Very they, drinkable. What, what's the, what's that? 6.8%. Uh, uh, no, 6.3. 6.3? Six three. Six three? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and hopped that's up with Hotel Blanc, Laurel, Mosaic. So you're going to get a nice little, nice little herbal floral notes, followed with that, you know, nice kind of blueberry, kind of lemony citrus from the Mosaic, and that nice clean lager finish. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a dangerous beer. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 6.3, that's, that's <laughs> no lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> We got our Wake and Haze. It's a hazy session IPA, which is a four point uh, yeah. four zero. We drink that oh, all the 4%. time. Four percent. Yeah. Yeah. Four percent. Yeah. So we made it for a breakfast beer called Wake and Haze. A breakfast yeah. beer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so wake up and start your day. That's yeah. right. With a Wake and Haze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see the jingle now. That's a great commercial. <laughs> yeah. So do you guys have favorites? Like, do you have like your favorite beer that you guys that you make? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I do personally. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, yeah. I think. I, yeah, go for it. Sorry, go my, for it. Uh, <laughs> you know, my 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 preference is always changing, but it, it happens to kind of be in the IPA hoppy category. Just that's just my thing. Okay. I don't know. I like other beers here and there, but you know, the hop chowder hands down right now is probably my favorite. Um, it's a juicy New England IPA. Right. That's good. For a that's long time, good. it was our dynamite IPA, which uh, you know my dad used to call it the HPA because it wasn't quite a pale ale, it wasn't quite an IPA. Uh, okay. So we decided to call it, uh, you know, we started with Dynamite Pale Ale, okay. and, uh, you know, we had it for months and months, and then, but our birthday suit would just kill it, birthday suit IPA. Yeah. And then one day, we're just like, well, it's a 6.3, 6.1. Mm -hmm. um, what if we try calling an IPA and see what happens? Because yeah. it technically really is, it's a really hoppy. As soon as we did it, as soon as we did off. it, flew off the shelf. Really? Because yeah. people just, just see IPA, the and they're like, that's what I want. Yeah. Oh, you have three IPAs now? Cool. Yeah. I think right now we have seven IPS. Yeah, they, yeah, currently we have seven. Soon yeah. to be eight with the IPL coming on. Yeah, that, that counts. Yeah. yeah, nice. So we also, I mean, I should have brought our menu down here, but we have, uh, you know, our, our browns, porters, imperial stouts, um, scotch ales. Um, then it goes back to our, you know, desert rose, golden ale. Um, yeah. I forget sometimes, but. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> so many, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. What about um, you, Jordan? What, what, do you have a favorite? As favorite, as far as favorite styles goes, people always ask me like, "Well, what's your favorite beer?" It's just kind of, I'm like, honestly, it just kind of changes. Yeah, like with every new thing we brew, like you know, we brew chowder. Oh, I love chowder. And then we did wake and haze. Oh, I love wake and haze. And it's just kind of, yeah, right. you just kind of hop around and you know, you, you like something you drink for a while and you kind of switch up and switch up. I mean, I probably couldn't say what my favorite style is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm currently drinking the the Marvin the Martin right now, which is spectacular. Yeah, that's okay. what you're drinking right now. It's like okay. an amber lager. Oh, so nice. it's. Super, amber super smooth, yeah. Chad, so. 
You got, you got a- uh, yeah, I, I mean, they're my, they're my children, so I like them. <laughs> and you all love them all. There is a favorite child, too, so. But no, I, I you know, I, I really like IPAs, like everyone else. I like pales. Um, Jordan and I really usually drink what's out the bright tank, yeah. right yeah. off the bright tank, because yeah. it's always the freshest beer, and yeah. we kind of go that route, but. Yeah. You know, I'll be sitting. I'll be sitting at the bar on a Friday night, just drinking a pale ale or drinking Desert Rose, and someone will order a porter, and I'll just see the pint on the bar, and I'm like, that looks fucking good. Like <laughs> so I'll have a porter and yeah. then a brown and a Mid, Scotch ale. Summer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just it always changes. It just depends on your flavor. It depends on if you're on the balcony, if you're down in the gold mine. True. Yeah. yeah. Pool parties are, you know, mostly yeah. our poolside pilsner. Okay. Pool side pilsner, or wake smash and lager, wake and haze, something so like. You can drink yeah. seven of them and feel okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a little more. Like, yeah. Not one imperial stout. Oh, <laughs> right. Or a barley wine. Uh, three on the pound. Thirteen percent barley wine. <laughs> yeah. You guys make a really good barley wine too, right? Yeah, that one turned out awesome. Um, yeah. We actually sold it on our. Uh, we tapped it on our two-year anniversary, which it did really well that day. Um, not so much in cans, you'd, you'd think. Just um, well, you know, uh, 30 percent bottle of wine in May might not be that. You know, the hottest seller down in Phoenix. It's a it's a <laughs> bottle of wine, technically, yeah. the, yeah. the equivalent alcohol you know, best, content. The best part about it is it's what um, four months, five months old, and it's only gotten better. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> the cans we still have from our two-year anniversary are even better than yeah. they're getting they were. better and better. Yeah. Yeah. You guys still have them up in the fridge. Up yeah, there? They do. Yeah. Probably got about One maybe sure. 20, 20, 25 left yeah. around there. Okay. Yeah, we we still have it on tap. We got a couple kegs left, so, so. Oh, nice. we're gonna save a keg and tap it on our three year. Oh, that's awesome! So. And, it, and it keeps getting like better as it's sitting in the even. Yeah, the kegs. you know, a, a beer that high in alcohol, it's mm-hmm. it's really no different than wine or yeah, you know, light liquor because they they always age a little bit better over the years. Right. But you know, you'll get to the point where it's four or five years old and it's so good like you wouldn't you wouldn't it's kind of leveled out yeah. and then yeah. you would not want to do that with a hoppy beer an oh. ipl or you know anything hoppy would shelf life maximum three months you know oh, we gotcha. we try to keep it you yeah. know a month here you know we're we're, we're kind of snobby i guess but you know <laughs> the day is like a month away it's like yeah. or our production team or our distribution <laughs> team is like just brew a lot of ipa and it's like well if it doesn't sell then it dies yeah, yeah. You know, in our in our mind but it's ended up selling so yeah Go brew IPAs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a couple this week. Nice. All right. So, well, guys, anything else you guys want to add before we wrap things up? Any? Uh... Um, we could cover the basis. Yeah. Yeah. I think we pretty much drank every beer that you guys had, all 29. Yeah, I'm wasted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Um, so you guys are 3608 North Scottsdale Road. Correct. Right. Right next yeah. to Sip Coffee and Beer House. Sure. Yes, the garage, yeah. the house. Yeah. Right? That place is awesome too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Um, goldwaterbrewing.com, Instagram, goldwaterbrewingco.com. Yes. Right? Awesome. Goldwater Brewing Co. You guys come down, drink their beer. You've got a lot of selection, so right. keep that up. And we got barrels aging right here that uh, can't wait to so we one of those. Open just today. let everyone know we uh, yeah. we only do beer here. Yeah. We have red and white wine on tap. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> um, yeah. We don't do food. We don't do liquor. We got popcorn. We do have popcorn. Popcorn, <laughs> free popcorn. But yeah, we we can't legally say you have to buy a beer, but we prefer you buy a beer. Some people come <laughs> and we... eat popcorn and leave. I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. Dude, you guys been to Goldwater Popcorn Company? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, hey man, the jalapeno popcorn's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess just kind of a finishing statement. Um, you know, getting into the barrel aging scene and kind of just starting getting that going. We have huge plans coming up for. For the releasing of these beers, um, you know, with cam releases and just with parties in general. Yeah. Um, we're thinking block party, barrel aged beer fest. Um, you tell me about that. That sounds bad. So we might do that in our courtyard come January, February, hopefully January. So it's cold out. Um, have bonfires out there. Invite. Maybe we're we're in the talks of uh, inviting some Flagstaff breweries out, so you can get get some Flagstaff barrel aged beers and darker yeah. beers. Um, you know, here in Scottsdale. So yeah, that'd be pretty fun. So. Keep an eye out for that. I think that'd be really fun. But uh, yeah. And you know, just to give you guys a little tidbit. You know, what we got going in our barrels right now is we got, we got Imperial Rye Brown and a couple uh, bourbon whiskey barrels and a rye whiskey barrel. We got uh, some Scotch Ale and some Port Bourbon barrels, some Scotch barrels and some Port uh, Breckenridge uh, 
bur- uh, bourbon barrels. <laughs> and then we also have uh, our imperial stout in a rum barrel, a bourbon port barrel, a port barrel, uh, sorry, bourbon barrel, and then we also have a Pinot Noir barrel. So you can, you can get this variety. list online coming soon, or a lot of I'll, I'll post yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah a it's, 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 it's a tongue barrel. twister. Barrel. Dylan will get that taken care of. <laughs> Someone last night ordered it. I'll take the barrel aged beer. I'm like, which one? Yeah. We also got some empty tequila barrels that we got some big plans for too. So those will probably be a imperial rose. Um, yep. an imperial version of our desert rose cactus ale mm-hmm. um, put that in there and see what happens so <laughs> and nice. we'll we'll crack them all open and drink them in six months yeah I'm down with that see what happens. invite me I'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome guys hey keep up the great work you sure. guys are doing awesome stuff so. appreciate it thank you yeah, thanks for having us thanks dudes Hey, thanks for listening in. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Get down to Old Town. Check out their place down there. It's awesome. Check out the Gold Mine Tap Room, all the beers. Awesome dudes. Uh, Gold Mine is a really cool place. Literally, it's actually pretty cold down there, which I like cold places. So <laughs> it's awesome, especially in the summer. You can get down there. Anyways, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, go to YouTube. We got a new YouTube channel now with some video content rolling out. Um, tapthatazy.com. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast apps and AZ Food and Beer. Check that one out too. Uh, In the meantime, always remember, stay awesome.